Purple Ties Podcast. Great stories of Treveca Trojans and life on the hill. Hello, everyone. I'm Greg Ruff. Welcome to episode number six of the Purple Ties Podcast. I'm in Hermitage, Tennessee. Producer DK is in an undisclosed location, and Michael Johnson is live in Old Hickory, Tennessee, and we'll be introducing our guest for episode number six in just a moment. But Michael, first off, I want to remind people to jump in on the comments section, uh, share the podcast as you will, whether you're watching it live or in tape uh, delay. Uh, and we would encourage you to do that uh, because we want to see the comments and get your feedback. And you can even ask questions. We'll try to get those on the air during the broadcast. But as we do that, I introduce Michael Johnson, the master of atmosphere, to introduce episode number six and our guest. Greg, Boy, this has just been a great day already, and uh, here in episode number six, we're able to welcome in uh, a great friend uh, to you and me personally, but also to uh, Trevecca Nazarene University. Frank Wilson is our guest today uh, in this episode and uh, really has one of the the most incredible runs uh, of any coach in Trevecca's history, uh, both in terms of longevity and also in terms of success. Uh, Frank Wilson came to Trevecca in uh, 1979 after a successful stint at Olivet Nazarene University, where he coached uh, Sam Harris, who ended up succeeding him for 25 years as the coach at Trevecca, and also his brother Steve, who uh, served as uh, Dean of Students at Trevecca for uh, over 34 years. Um, And when Frank arrived on the scene, It was a brand new uh, day in many respects because uh, Ron Bargatze in his one year had created a lot of buzz and had helped uh, begin to turn the program around. But when Frank Wilson arrived, uh, the winds really started rolling. And uh, I want to uh, run down just a few of the career highlights uh, before we have a chance to really get into a conversation with Frank. But uh, seventh coach in Trevecca men's basketball history. First to ever win 20 games. Uh, that was in his second season, 1980-81, at 23 and 12 record. Maybe just a little misleading. That's one of the best basketball teams in my memory uh, that Trevecca ever had. Uh, highlighted by a stellar play uh, from Melvin Taylor and James Baker and and uh, man, I'm forgetting some names right now. Greg Pemberton was a big part of that. Mark Williams had transferred in. That was a great team. I, I digress. Uh, Frank also uh, had eight s- seasons where he had at least 19 wins, um, had uh, a eight 20 win seasons, and the school's only 30 win season in basketball. And that was in 1986 87 when that team went 30 and four, reaching the NAIA National Championships for the first time ever, got all the way to the Elite Eight, and if not for some unfortunate illnesses and a couple of injuries, um, I still think that team had the firepower, perhaps, to to win it all. Uh, Frank Wilson coached nine NAIA All-Americans, with two of them, Melvin Taylor and Avery Patton, making the first team. Uh, David Suddeth was also named uh, NAIA District 24 player of the year. Um, in addition to Melvin Taylor and, and Avery Patton. And then Patton was the first Trojan ever selected to the NAIA all tournament team. Uh, David Seddeth in 1991, um, was the, uh, Tennessee collegiate athletic conference player of the year. He had, uh, 13 players over the course of his career. Um, become NAIA All-District 24 team members. He coached 20 All-Conference players. um, And then he also joined uh, seven of his players in the uh, Hall of Fame at Trevecca. Frank Wilson uh, had uh, Fred Harris, Calvin Holmes, Melvin Taylor, Avery Patton, Tim Bell, Mac Heberlin, David Suddeth, and Sandy McLean all named to the Hall of Fame, and then two of his staffers, Todd Welch, who served for many years as the team manager, and then Ken Stegall, who uh, has served as statistician at Trevecca, mm-hmm. I think, since around 1981, if I, if memory serves me correctly. Um, 
There were a couple of other things that uh, would be of note. He was a volunteer state athletic conference coach of the year twice, Tennessee Collegiate Athletic Conference Coach of the Year once, NAIA District 24 twice, NAIA Area 5 one time, that was in 1987, Mm -hmm. and his uh, uh, stunning 285 and 174 record all time at Trevecca. And prior to that, I mentioned that he was at Olivet. He was 63 and 31 in his three years at Olivet. Um, he, he is an absolute, um, you know, legend at Trevecca, so many great stories about the teams that he coached, but one of the things that really stands out about, um, the, uh, the career of Frank Wilson comes from the words of Don Meyer, the uh, longtime, uh, Lipscomb university, uh, coach. And, uh, you know, the late Don Meyer said this about, uh, Frank Wilson, some of the toughest games of my career were against teams coached by Frank Wilson at Trevecca. His teams were known to play hard every night, and he might be the most competitive and intense coach I've ever gone against. And Meyer went on to say he's always making adjustments and made it hard for your team to compete against his teams. Frank Wilson was a truly great coach and a foe I always enjoyed competing against. And I can't think of any greater endorsement besides the ones that all of us Trojan fans can give and for our greatest rival back during uh, that era of Trojan sports, for Don Meyer to say those kinds of things about Frank Wilson. And I'm thrilled to welcome him in here to uh, the broadcast today. Frank, welcome in. And uh, Michael talked about a lot of really great things. In, in fact, uh, it's interesting that he talked about in reference Don Meyer's quote about you uh, in, going into the Trevecca Hall of Fame. Uh, because I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, Philip Hutchison's son just signed to uh, to play at Trevecca uh, starting next year. Uh, any any thoughts about uh, you know hearing from Don Meyer and also think about Philip Hutchison's boy Hank coming to play at Trevecca? Oh, I think that's uh, I didn't know that. That's oh wow, Phil and his <laughs> father is such a terrific guy. Yeah, I mean uh, you know. Uh, uh, he, he has purple blood, you know, for yes, lips. He does. And, uh, I, I just really respect him. And, and also Don Myers, uh, over the years, we became very close friends. Uh, we would have lunch together. He was always picking my brain about things. Uh, it was really quite comical, but, uh, a lot of people don't know it, but he and I were really close friends. Um, and I miss him. I miss him, and um, I, I just have such great memories about him and and his teams. They were they were terrific. I'm going to let Michael ask some questions here, but I, I, I got to talk about this because we talked about some great moments with Jennifer just uh, about an hour ago. Um, but one of my favorite moments when it comes to you, and there mm-hmm. are many of them, and, and when I think about Jennifer as well, I was sitting on the back porch of my house. And it was my job to call you and uh, talk to you about coming into the Trevecca Hall of Fame and doing it with your daughter, Jennifer. And then when that day came, we've got some photos of, of that when that happened. And uh, it, I got emotional the other day looking through the photos and seeing the one where she's getting the Hall of Fame plaque and you're behind her. And uh, you can see that you're a little bit emotional in that picture. But <laughs> talk about that moment just a little bit, how much that meant to you to not only watch her play, but then to go into the Hall of Fame at Trevecca with your daughter at the same time? Well, uh, when it's your child, it is emotional. (laughs) (laughs) Mm. Mm. Um, I remember we were out in the yard one day playing wiffle ball, her mother, sister, and brother and I, and um, I was the pitcher, and they had to run bases. I pitched the ball. She hit the ball over the house. <laughs> and I looked at my wife as she was round in third base. And I looked at my wife, Debbie, and I said, there's my All-American. <laughs> so, but it is. It, uh, I know how hard she works. I know uh, how much she loves the game. Um, uh, I thought she would coach basketball right away. Um, uh, as I mentioned earlier uh, to you, um, she had been offered three really good high school or two good high school jobs and a and a university job, and she turned them down. And 
I asked her, I said, what, what are you thinking? She says, Dad, I love Mount Juliet High School. I love my job and I love my kids. So that summed it all up. No more questions. But, uh, I, I really felt that Jennifer would be successful. And success is when you love your kids and you work hard and you try to help them become the very best that they can be, then you're a successful coach. It's, it's not always uh, winning all the games. And um, it, it was very difficult for me to leave all of that. And um, uh, I had great players. And one year while we're in the NCCA, uh, NCCA and there was over 100 colleges and universities, we won the national championship. Yeah. We Viola, Viola out of California, 71 to 67. And it was very emotional, very difficult to leave. But uh, our child, you know, Jennifer, she just, she's the natural. It, she's just, things come to her so easily. But on top of that, she was such a hard worker. And I can remember going to the gym with her. And uh, you've mentioned her jump shot. Well, she was an outstanding volleyball player. Matter of fact, at Overton, they were like 52, 53, and two or three. I, they were number one in the state. And Jennifer could have played, really, Division One volleyball. And um, But I worked with her on the short corner shots. Uh, her uh, with volleyball, she had such great timing on her jump. So I knew she'd be a good jump, uh, have a nice jump shot. And we worked on that, and it came very easy for her. And she and she did. She had a, a very beautiful uh, jump shot. Hard worker. Michael, I'll turn your, your your turn to ask a question. Well, I uh, I thought I would ask you about what it was like to to deal with um, the dual role of athletic director and head basketball coach back during that time, and and how you managed uh, to to do all of the, the work of the athletic department plus the basketball team. I know you had uh, several years there where, where Steve Harris and Fred Harris uh, were able to be with you and, and help on the coaching and recruiting side a little bit. But give, give the folks a, a little bit of a memory of what it was like to operate a very successful program. We didn't have as many sports back then, but everybody was pretty good back then as well. And mm -hmm. But we didn't have a lot of money. Uh, do you have any recollections about what it was like to have that dual role of AD and, and head basketball coach? Well, it was, it certainly was challenging, but you know, when you have a coach like Elliot Johnson and Alan Smith, um, I mean, they, they, they were ter terrific coaches. Um, it makes the AD's job a lot easier. I could focus a lot on basketball. I didn't have to worry about their programs. And I did whatever I could to be supportive, of course, but uh, um, it, it was um, uh, somewhat time consuming at times, but not as much as, uh, as others, as um, uh, you know, uh, when you're an athletic director, you have a dozen sports, that's a bit, that's very difficult. But uh, another thing too, and this is a tribute to uh, coach Johnson and, uh, Alan Smith, um, uh, we were in uh, Sports Illustrated, where we had the uh, one of the best small college programs for an entire decade. Wow. And that wasn't me. Now, that wasn't all about me. That was about Alan Smith and Elliot Johnson. And yeah. we all worked together very well. And, and it was wonderful. As far as not having scholarships, yes, we never had I think the most we ever had was around five uh, where Don told me one year he had 18. <laughs> and I said, wow, what are you doing at 18? You know? And, uh, but no, we didn't, but uh, we were able to recruit well and um, uh, pray a lot, <laughs> prayed all the time, um, <laughs> but no, it was a great run and I enjoyed it. I would uh, preferably, I would rather just coach basketball and not be an AD. Yeah. You know, uh, Coach, one of the things I think about over the years, when you go back and you prepare to do something like this and to do it, you know, for Jennifer before and now with you, 
you start looking through pictures and all that kind of different thing, and you see all kinds of different faces. It wasn't just the athletes that you had. You had Sandy McLean and Avery and Mac and just go down the list. And I'm a Facebook friends with a lot of them, and so I get to keep up with all of them. I know a lot of them are watching right now. And I also know guys like Ken Stegall are, are watching and maybe even Steve. Steve Harris is now, I think, on Facebook. I'm not sure, but the, the, the world didn't end and Steve Harris got on Facebook. But, but you know, a lot of those guys are going to watch, whether it's here or on YouTube later, and just talk about all the guys and, and a lot of the girls, too, that, that helped support your program over the years and just made it what it is today. Well, you're right. There were so many people involved and uh, – Steve Harris came with me from all of that. And, uh, of course, he's involved in student government and all that. Um, but Steve uh, was an outstanding point guard. In fact, um, I never told him this, but I will now. I'll embarrass him, maybe. Um, <laughs> but he was so good. He not only was so good fundamentally, um, he was so smart. He, uh, in, in fact... Uh, he reminds me a lot of my daughter, Jennifer. He was a, a court general. And I'm telling you, uh, I'll never forget. We're playing up in Chicago, Xavier University. We're down one, 10 seconds to go. They got the ball right in front of the bench. Steve picks that guard's pocket, goes down, lays it up. We win the ball game. But uh, Steve not only was a great ball player, uh, he would have been, trust me, he would have been a whale of a coach. He had it all. He really did. But I think God called him in a different direction. And uh, he was uh, obviously very successful. But he was, uh, he added so much to the team. And a lot of my success came with having him on the bench as well as Fred Harris. So I, I am truly indebted to Steve. And, you know, Fred is no longer with us, but Fred was such an incentive as well, uh, not only to me, but with the team. And and uh, Fred, uh, Steve was the same way. Uh, the kids loved him. And, you know, uh, being a head coach, a lot of times, if there's frustration on the team or questions to be asked, they'll go ask the assistant coach. They won't come to me. Well, they might eventually. But <laughs> Steve and Fred, it's such a super job, and uh, I just appreciate him so much. And a great deal of my success goes to the guys that were around me. It, it wasn't all me. It wasn't all me. Uh, and they helped me recruit, too, and and I did. I, I recruited some really good athletes. Coach, uh, what besides the 1986-87 team that shattered all those records, I mean, that was just such a phenomenal run that year. Uh, what are what are maybe a couple of other career moments that uh, really stand out to you? Do you have any particular game or season, um, whether it's at Olivet uh, or or Trevecca? What what do you remember most about your coaching career? Whether it's a game or a group of guys or just something in general about what what meant the most to you about coaching all those years? Well, first of all, I go back and I remember a lot of the players. Uh, you mentioned a lot of kids that made All-American, but my goodness gracious, when you have a Charles Brooks and a Sandy McLean, a uh, Heberlin, Standy and Mason, uh, 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 Heifer, uh, uh, and another one you, you pointed out was the 81 team. That team, boy, we had a lot of work. We had to bring a lot of new people together. And they were, they were very, very good. And I think probably, and I have a lot of games that really stood out, but the one that stood out so much was um, when we won the district against Lipscomb and we went two overtime and we won 112 to 106. Yeah. And uh, I'll, I'll never forget, we're going into overtime and I'm sitting there and I'm thinking and – Okay, we're set. We're to go. Avery Patton walks over. He looks at me. He says, Coach, sit down. This game's over. Just sit down and relax. <laughs> <laughs> now, how many coaches ever have a point guard like that? Yeah. Now, another one now that never got credit 
was Steve Harris. I'm telling you, you take Steve, if I took Steve and put him on any team that I had, we would have won five or six more games. <laughs> I don't know. He never gave a lot of credit. He always was in the background with Sam, so to speak. But I'm telling you, after his sophomore year at Olivet, he really became the player. And uh, I taught some of the things to Jennifer that Steve did as well, like uh, a step fake with the ball. Oh, he was fantastic. And he scored like crazy off that move. But Jennifer learned that. And uh, But to go back and to look at certain games, the, the big game was, no doubt about it, is when uh, Trebekah was never supposed to get to a national. Come on. Never. And that challenge when I came here, and I guess maybe that's why I was such an intense coach, is that I wanted to prove the fact that, yeah, we're better than what you think, and we're going <laughs> to go somewhere. And these kids did it. <coughs> Excuse me. But that was a wonderful moment. It really was. Well, well that also ended, uh, for maybe people that don't know, that ended Lipscomb's national championship defense Uh you know, they, they were the defending national champion and uh, they were supposed to go back and defend that and not only defend it, but win it. And, and you guys ended that at, uh, at the Trojan Fieldhouse. Uh, and it did. And also uh, our kids, when we played Lipscomb, I think there were two other times they were number one in the nation and we beat them. Yeah. And I'll never forget one moment. This is my buddy, Don Myers. This is Don. Okay. Uh, we're playing them on a Friday night. I call up. I say, Don, how are you doing? Oh, Frank, I'm doing okay. What do you want? I said, well, uh, do, you, uh, uh, do you realize what today is? He says, yeah, it's Friday. Uh, or we're going to their place. We're going to play in there. Uh, yeah, I said, it's Friday the 13th. Don, we're going to beat you 13 on your floor. <laughs> and he laughed. He laughed. Okay. We go over there. We beat them 13, okay? <laughs> All right, we still got to play them again a month later. And the date on that was the 26th. So I called Don up, <laughs> and Don says, what do you want now? And I said, uh, do you realize what the date is? He says, yeah, it's, a, it's a, the 26th. I said, hey, Don, we're, we're going to beat you 26 points tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Well, to make a long story short, we beat them 26 points. I, I don't know. Uh, I, I, that's crazy. You know, I was just playing games with him. But we were good buddies, and uh, we always had some really good times together. And But I, I've always told that story. I've told it to my kids, and it is funny. It's hilarious. Uh, I don't know how it all happened, but it did. But uh, I, I, love, I love competing against them. Win or lose. As long as my kids played well, that's okay. Okay. Uh, I have one other uh, standout moment uh, that I want to ask you about and see how much of the, of the total moment you, you, can, you can recall. When, uh, when Ricky Bowers, you're talking about those great Lipscomb teams, mm -hmm. when Ricky Bowers was uh, standing at the free throw line, I think he, he was over 90%. Uh, Shooting 85, you know, 85 from the line, 80, 85 yeah. from the line and lips comes up one and we don't have the, we don't have the three point line at that point. Um, but just, just take it from there about, uh, I mean, did y'all kind of time out before Ricky shot th those free throws? I mean, the, if, if he made both free throws, the game was over regardless, but, mm -hmm. um, just give me a, just give me a, a quick, uh, rundown of what you remember about that moment and how it turned out. Well, there was under 10 seconds to play in the game. So I call a timeout and I said, okay, guys, if uh, they're going to expect us, if he misses to call a timeout or whatever, they think we're going to call a timeout. Well, we're not going to do it. <laughs> what we're going to do is I want so-and-so to peel out right side, left side, whoever gets the ball, if you can't pass, Get it down the floor as fast as you can because I said, uh, uh, even with four seconds, you got enough time to get a decent shot. Well, <coughs> excuse me, Tim Bell got the rebound and he took it down the floor 
I think he was two steps across uh, the line, and he let it fly, and it was a swisher. We won the ball game. <laughs> what's really funny, though, what's really funny, though, there, Michael, is uh, I talked uh, about Myers. Well, Tim Bell was interviewed, and he said, the Lord made that shot. I didn't make it. <laughs> anyway, in the paper later, when we were going to play, I know Don Myers mentioned, and he said, well, before we go over, we're going to have an altar call. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I got a big kick out of that. So, yeah, it, it was great. There were so many uh, wonderful memories. And, and I have always said the greatest people that I've ever met in my life have been other basketball coaches. And I have so many friends around the country uh, that I got to know, not real well, but a lot of them. And we shared uh, by uh, by letter, by maybe sharing an offense or an inbound play or uh, some kind of defense. But yeah, I have so many wonderful memories and God has been so good uh, then and he is now. And, and my prayers are always with Trevecca. Uh, I wish uh, Coach uh, Matt well, and I would just say, Coach, you know, be patient, recruit hard, and pray a lot, and you're going to be <laughs> Well, you, we're going to conclude it with this, and, and we could talk a, a long time with you uh, today, and we really are appreciative of your time today, and uh, we need to do this again uh, before very long. But two guys, and, and there's a lot of guys that, that played for you that wanted to coach you and doing different things in the community, but two in particular recently, Jim Fay and Avery Patton. Just talk about them, and because I know you, you're around them a little bit uh, with their coaching. I know you got to be really proud of Avery uh, in particular with what he did in his first year as the head coach at East. Well, I am so proud of him. Um, Avery coming out of Glencliff High School, um, he, he's a tough kid, and uh, he had the reputation of that. And uh, he came, and but Avery will listen to you. He's a common sense guy. And uh, I, I had to set him straight a couple of times. And he, he's a real man about it. And uh, I know, I think it was sophomore year, I heard a rumor that he might transfer to Tennessee State. So I called his mother. And I talked to Mrs. Patton. And I said, I just want you to know that this is what I heard. And uh, Avery means a lot to me. And it's not just basketball. It's him as a person and his life. And I just want you to know that he needs to be here. Mm. And I will always watch out for him. And if something comes up that's difficult, I'm going to call you. And she said, thank you, coach. I really appreciate it. But he's going to be, <laughs> he's going to be a Trevetta. So that was a memory there. And Avery was such a, a tough competitor and, um, um, there was never any quit in him. Um, he would do. He he would die for you uh, on the floor. Uh, he, he just would. And um, I I just uh, he he's always been. I will say this, just like a second son to me, to be honest with you. And I love him and appreciate. I'm so proud of him and what he's done. Here he's assistant director of juvenile court, juvenile court in Nashville, in, in state. Assistant Director of Juvenile Court, and they need somebody like him. Mm -hmm. People have such an, a lasting influence on these young men. And here he's coaching at, at East uh, 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 Magnet School, has done a terrific job. Uh, I think he's got the best point guard in the state, and he's only a freshman. Mm -hmm. That's right, the best point guard. I know Vanderbilt wants him right now. Or they're looking at him. But anyway, Avery Avery did so much for us. And uh, and Jim Fay is another one. Jim is, I would guess I would be somewhat of a mentor to him. And uh, Jim, uh, well, in, in nine years, his team went to state five times. Five times. So, um, and he had a great year at Summit. Uh, great young man, good with kids. Uh, and both of them have a wonderful future. Absolutely. Well, Coach, uh, really appreciate it. Michael, appreciate you as well. And uh, would be remiss if we didn't thank uh, the folks that helped make it possible. Uh, David Komkowski and his wife, Sarah, working on it 
uh, out at an undisclosed location. And uh, my kids, uh, David's kids, and uh, I know Michael and his wife, Sarah, have a lot to do, with, especially in these times that we are. And we can't be... Uh, can't close this without thanking Jennifer Wilson for uh, helping put all this together uh, yeah. today, and we, we really do appreciate it. So thanks for uh, our guest today, uh, Frank Wilson, also Jennifer earlier, and now for the Master of Atmosphere, Michael Johnson. I'm Gregory Ruff. That's all for now from The Hill. Thank you, y'all. Purple Ties Podcast. Great stories of Treveca Trojans and life on the hill.